Hi again, here we are to talk about uh, Xcode and continue with our to-do app and uh, working with core data. Um, so in the last video, we, you know, we set up a reference to our context, our managed object context, and then we set up a function here to fetch our to-dos, right? And now we need to take care of this error and add a couple other features here to make it work with core data. So, uh, you know, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a function here. And the thing is, you know, when you're working with core data, every time you make a change to the context, you have to save the context, okay? So essentially, you know, if you update the database, you have to save the database or tell the database to save, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new function here called save context. Okay, there we go. And this will use a do and catch block, a do try catch block, okay? So I'll type that in here, right? So I've got do and catch. And what we want to do is we want to try context.save, okay? So anytime you want to save the context, you're just going to call context.save. And this can throw an error. So if we click on it here, you can see throws. So that throws an error. Um, so we try it, and then if it does throw an error, we will uh, catch the error here as an NS error, okay? Um, and if, if we had an error, then we can say, um, you know, print, you know, we can say, you know, error saving um, context, right? Uh, and then we'll say, uh, you know, colon, we can put the error message here and say uh, error.user. info and I have some problem here um, oh yeah it's got to be as NS error there we go right so anyway so there we've got that all worked out so you know we, we'll just put this in a in a function because we will have to do this anytime we update the database and we'll be doing that in um, in add new to do and remove to do and we might do it in other circumstances too so um, so it's kind of going to be helpful to have a function that can do this little block every time we need it okay so next, um, we're going to add a new to-do. And in the old um, version, um, it was pretty e easy to add a to-do because we could create a to-do and it had a helper initializer where we could send in a name and it would cre create a to-do with that name. Um, creating managed objects is a little more complicated. Um, it's not much more complicated, but it is a little more complicated. So uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll just start with what we had before. I'm going to remove that little block here where we created a to-do object. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call in NS Entity Description. Okay, so I'm going to call on Entity Description, and then I'll say dot insert new object for entity for name. I know that's kind of a weird, you know, kind of convoluted um, name there for that method, but that's the one we want. Okay, insert new object for entity for name. And then the name here needs to be the name of your entity. In our, in our case, the entity is named to do. Okay? So if I look at my, you know, XE model data, um, the entity up here is called to do. And so the name here has to match exactly with the name here. Okay? And then it says in uh, managed object context, and that's going to be our context. Okay? And the thing is, this function right here, this is a little bit long. Maybe I'll move that to another line, right? But uh, this, um, this function here um, returns, and if I hold the option key and click on its name, you can see it returns an NS managed object. But, but really what I want right here is I want a to-do object, right? One of these, right? So this to-do object is an NS managed object, but I want the computer to recognize it as a to-do object, and then the the compiler will recognize that it has these properties of name and completed which don't belong to the regular NS managed object, right? So what we'll do is we'll say as a to-do, okay? And um, you can see what this is doing here. If I put a comment here and then I option click on to-do, 
you can see that the computer recognizes this as an NS managed object, right? And that's not quite what we want. And if I say as to do, like this, if I put the as to do on the end, and then when I option click on this, you'll see that it says to do. So now we know that that's for sure going to be a to do object, okay? And um, you can put initializers in these um, entities or these NS manage objects, but it's a little tricky to write that in here. Um, it's not as easy as it is with the regular class. So I kind of opted for the easier method. And what I'll do is I'll just set the, um, the name property right here. So I'll say name equals, you know, name like that. Okay. And if you remember, this name is the property that belongs to the to-do to item. And this name right here is the, the value that comes into the function up here, right? And we can see that because I can, I can see this little dashed underline there when I put the cursor in here. And then you can see this one has it because they're the same item. Even though this has the same spelling, it's not the same variable, so it doesn't get the little underline, okay? So anyway, so we're set there, and then why don't we um, set the completed property too? So, you know, when you create a new to-do, the completed property should be false, so we'll just set it to false, okay? And then we can insert a to-do into our array, right? And that's good, but we'll need to do one more thing. We'll also have to save the context, okay? Because we created a new entity, so that updates our database, so creating the entity here, um, you know, makes a change to the database. So we need to save that change with the context, or um, it won't be it won't be recorded, right? So um, so we'll call save context, right? And that'll work with that function that we just wrote. So that's looking pretty good. So now let's um, let's go to remove to do at index. Well. You know, we want to definitely keep this line of code because that removes the to-do from the array, right? But now we also need to remove it from the database, right, from the context. So what we'll do is we'll say, um, what, what are we going to do here? We're going to say um, context.delete object, okay? So we want to say delete object, and the object we want to delete is this NS managed object, okay? Now, if you recall, our to-do items are NS managed objects, right? So we can remove any to-do item by passing the to-do item into delete object. Um, and, you know, we could just do, you know, to-dos bracket, you know, index to get the to-do. But we actually have this method up here that says to-do at index that returns a to-do item, right? So what we'll do is we'll just call on that. We'll say, uh, you know, to-do at index index and then we pass in the index that we want you know where the to-do is located in and it returns the to-do to us right okay great so that that removes the to-do from the database this removes it from our array that we're using to display the to-dos in the table view and then you know since we changed the database here we, we did something with the context we need to save the context so we'll say save context okay so there we go um, so that works pretty good. Um, let's give it a test here and see if it um, if it works right. Well, there's probably some problems, but uh, we'll click the the test button here or the run button. And so it loads up here, and then we have an error, right? So let's take a look at this. So you know what I think is um, it says up here it says terminating app. <laughs> there I got a message from somebody. Um, it says terminating app due to uncaught exception. And then it says there's some problem here. Index zero beyond bounds for empty array. So there's something weird there. And what I think is I think that we have some code left over from one of the um, previous examples. So um, let's make sure that we um, let's make sure that we remove the code here that adds to-dos to our array, because we're going to add them now through the context, right? And then let's go to the, um, the view controller here. And in here, in view did load, I think that we included some stuff here that adds some to-dos and does some things with to-dos. So let's remove this also. And I think that that might be my problem there. Um, right, yeah, I think this is all good there. Um, I think it's just this stuff here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this, right? 
and uh, yeah, because I think it's I think the problem is this one right here where it tries to get it to do an index zero and our to do our array is essentially empty right now. So we'll just delete that from view did load and then we'll give it another test. Oh great, so no errors that time, cross our fingers, right? Um, so there's no to-dos either, right? So why don't we try and add one? I'll click the plus button here and we'll say, you know, um, brush teeth and click save and then there's brush teeth and then we'll go over here and we'll we'll say, you know, eat breakfast and save it and then we'll close it there and now we'll say, you know, tie shoes and uh, now we've got a to-do list with three items on it, right? And what I want to do is I want to quit the app and see if these to-dos come back. And then we'll know that core data is working, okay? So if I stop the app here and then start it again, then hopefully we see our three to-dos and there they are, right? So it looks like everything's working. And, you know, if you, you know, normally if you just move an app to the background and what I'm doing here is I'm going to use the home button. So um, home is um, shift command H, okay? And that's just like pressing the home button on your phone. So if I do that and then I go back to the um, to the to-do app here, you'll see the, the things. But really when I did that, just moving the app to the background doesn't actually quit the app, okay? So what we need to do is I'm going to double tap Command Shift H, and that's like double tapping the home button. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move, slide the app up like that, and what that's going to do is that's going to quit the app. So now it's quit for sure, and so if I start it again, now it's starting from scratch, and then it is definitely going out and going to the database and retrieving our, our to-do items, okay? So hopefully you got that far, and uh, pat yourself on the back if you did, because you just tackled core data, which is a difficult subject, and 